we get to the papers. Suzanne, put us out of our misery. Are you going to stand? <laughs> Look, I, I'm reflecting on it very carefully. I, I really am taking soundings from members and so on and so forth. Um, I think the parties just experienced the downsides of a new leader who perhaps didn't quite reflect carefully enough. So I will make a decision, uh, come to an informed decision, and I will make an announcement as and when. But not now. But not today. OK, and what about the shenanigans in Strasbourg? What do you make of that? I think, I think as Nigel said, it's very unseemly. Uh, it's not the way two men should behave in public. Um, ab absolutely not. Uh, you know, UKIP is a party that's got to get its act together, let's be honest. We need to be the opposition in waiting, as our very, very swift former leader actually said, because the Labour Party is no opposition. So UKIP has got to get its act together and clearly the events... This so you think at the moment you're letting your voters down? I think the voters at the moment would perhaps have every right not to have the confidence in them that I think they can have in the party. I think UKIP has got a huge role to play going forward. People are saying, oh, UKIP's lost its focus, lost its purpose, Brexit's going to happen. But I think there's much more that we can be doing. And in fact, I, I'm working on a big policy document at the moment looking at what UKIP can offer to the electorate going forward. And I'm very much looking forward to launching that. And that would be the basis for uh, a leadership no, not bid, necessarily, a manifesto. Those are sort of okay. part of my, part of my day, day job. But, uh, but absolutely, I hope whoever is the new leader will take some of those ideas forward. All right, well, this is a paper review. Let's uh, dive into it. Jenny, you've got this uh, in the Sunday Times. Times. Louise Casey, the anti-extremism czar, as she is dubbed. She's had a report out, hasn't she, on the whole issue for, well, she's finished it for several months and it's not being released. Yeah, that's the point. She's finished it and it's not out. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Louise Casey is one of the most impressive civil servants um, that I've ever come across. She's very tough. She's independent-minded. She ran the Troubled Families programme. She's the person who went in and investigated the scandal of what had gone on in Rotherham. Mm when um, all the authorities had failed to pursue the cases of all those children who were being abused. And she was asked by David Cameron and Theresa May to do a report on what had gone wrong with the extremism project and what was the failure of integration in British society. And she spent months working on it. She's apparently got very, very trenchant criticisms of the way the Home Office has operated, about the failure to have a proper integration plan. And clearly, ministers are so embarrassed by it that they aren't putting it out, and according to the report today, they're desperately trying to rewrite it and turn it down. And Louise Casey had, has said through friends that she's not going to let that happen. Yeah, that right. she's, going to, she's going to get the facts out no matter what. Uh, uh -huh. I, I think this is, you know, I, I am quite dubious about some of these government SARS. I think sometimes they're put in to try and, uh, as a PR exercise, when the government's got a difficult problem that it wants to solve and it wants to make itself look good. Mm. Well, we're doing something, we're putting in this government SAR. Well, I think Louise Casey has quite rightly called their bluff on this. She's actually one of the few that have done a good job, she's done something, and now they're saying, oh, well, because you've reached the wrong conclusion, we're going well, to Well, this try is the thing, I mean, going into so some, of, it, going going into some of the <laughs> conclusions coming in on this cycle, I mean, it seems like, well, it's so fail, fail, fail in so many areas. So one, one, the, so two things. I mean, the first one is, um, I, I did history, so I sort of tend to look back in time. It's remarkable how this country consistently um, questions why it's being very liberal with immigrants, uh, and particularly political immigrants. I was going through um, at The Secret Agent by Conrad with my son about a week ago, and it's exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. We had a bunch of foreign immigrants coming from the East with, with extremist ideas and then the streets of London. So it's an old story, and generally speaking, this country is remarkably good eventually at integrating. Uh, and so I'm all for her publishing her report because it's important to integrate people, uh, but we mustn't forget that this country is really good at integrating people. Uh, think of the Jewish community that came from Russia uh, in the 19th century that was very isolated in Whitechapel. Uh, and for a long time lived almost as a completely isolated community and now is a fully integrated well, community. But, but I, I think the point is that we've seen that there have been acute failures they in have. many communities and about integration and Louise Casey's report is about let's not just turn our eyes away from Absolutely. it and say yeah. it always works well, out Well, let's hope it sees the, the exactly light of day right. and, 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 and we can d discuss it as we see it. But uh, Saka, bring in your story here. This is the uh, front of the Sunday Express today. A border today. that works. A border that works at last. It hails. Yeah. It's, it's so just before I do, by the way, I do not run a hedge fund. I run the pension scheme, which is owned oh. by working <laughs> men and women who, 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 who are ordinary yeah. working men. Well, anyway, got, got, got more so stories about that. So, sorry. Um, look, a board, of, a board of works. It, uh, I mean, there was a lot, we were talking about this in the green room beforehand. Um, there's a lot of sort of angst sometimes about Brexit, which is meaningless because people are not thinking things through. And it turns out that the great idea is effectively to have an e-visa system. It does work. Uh, it works in the States. It works elsewhere. 
it does have two downsides that might not please people. One is the government still has to trace people who came here Can but do not leave. Can you explain what's meant by an e-visa e -visa system. system? It's like when you go to the States, you actually apply online to go to the States. Or if you want to go to Australia, you apply online to go to Australia. They check you beforehand. They make sure you're the right sort of person they want you to come. So you think, well, I mean, what, they could do this at the Eurostar terminal in, in, in Paris? So they can I mean, do we're it, talking so about thousands of people so every yes. day. So before you come, you can do it, and then your passport is automatically checked, and either it says yes or it says no. The problem with the e-visa system is if you're coming to work, you have to have a different kind of visa. That's number one. And number two, it says in the article that we're going to demand that people who come to live here, quite rightly, I support it, speak English. Uh, and I look forward to going to Spain uh, with the half a million odd people uh, who are Brits, like me, who live in the south of Spain, speaking Spanish, because I'm fed up with them speaking English to waiters who can't quite understand them. Okay. So that's besides the point. Right. Well, that's added in there. Suzanne, uh, another story. I mean, this is all, uh, all dimensions of the, of the same issue. This is inside the sun, and we heard some tough talk, didn't we, at the Conservative Party conference from Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, about um, deporting foreign criminals. It turns out, well, up to this point, it isn't no. happening. The Tories have been talking tough on deporting foreign crooks for quite some time, but it's simply not working. It's all talk and no action. And the story in The Sun today says that just two out of 453 foreign criminals have been kicked out of the United Kingdom once they've served their sentences. So what happens them? So, so, so they're released from jail and they, and they stay here? And they stay. You know, lawyers jump on the bandwagon, uh, manage to get them staying under human rights legislation. It's interesting, there's also a piece in The Express today about Abu Hamza trying to get, get back. back into the United Kingdom, saying his lawyers are saying there's a strong humanitarian case that it would be better for him on health grounds to be incarcerated here. Oh, my heart bleeds. <laughs> Sod off. Sorry, you can't come back. You know, um, th there's too much going on. There were also reports earlier in the week which horrified me that there is an Islamic hate preacher who says gay men should be burned and beheaded uh, to death or burned to death and beheaded. And he's actually teaching here in a school run by the Iranian government. What is so you that think the rhetoric doesn't about? match up it's to the action? absolutely nonsense. No, a lot of Brexiteers are saying Theresa May's fantastic, mm. she's taking us out of the EU, but let's not forget you her record as Home okay. Secretary was not uh, good. Jenny, now this might play into uh, Saka's expertise as well, although plenty of expertise there on uh, the borders. Uh, pensions revolution, this on the front of the Telegraph. Oh, yeah, this certainly didn't um, play into any expertise I've got, just into my... <laughs> You're interested. My, well, well, we've, we've got my, the autumn my, statement coming well, up. Soon. Well, I'm glad to see that the government's trying to do something imaginative, which is that it's looking at the fact that um, pension funds can only get very low returns now because there's such low interest rates. And so they're coming up with the idea that instead of just um, getting pensions to put their money out in the stock market, they can actually invest them in government infrastructure projects like HS2, like nuclear power stations, like railway schemes. The scandalous underpinning of this is that the reason that ministers are suggesting it is because we pay, as taxpayers, such big profits to um, the companies who come in and do this. It says here that yearly returns of 10% are Whoa. not uncommon. So in other words, we as taxpayers kind of have been allowing, exactly, we've been allowing private companies to get away with 10% profits. Well, and I, at least I, the government is now saying so that... What, 10%? I mean, you, you'll find it invest in this then for that kind so, of return, so wouldn't there, you? There are two things to say about the story. The first one is, by the way, uh, of course pension schemes have been investing in infrastructure for a long time uh, and in development. I mean, look at what Hermes we've done. We, we're the one who developed on the behalf of pensioners. Is this a sales the, pitch now? No, it's not. The, the whole of King's Cross. It's not, but it's important, actually, because we should use... Well, look, this is, forgive me. We should use the capital of this country. The savings of this pool are the capital of working men and women, ordinary people like you and me. This is the money that finances this country. The issue that this highlights is that because of low interest rates, the returns are very low. That means that ordinary working men and women Absolutely. will not have enough to retire on. Absolutely. That's the key story. And of course hmm. it should be... F uh, invested in infrastructure for this country, and yes, I will make a sales pitch. We invested. Okay. Invested. But just tell us very briefly. I mean, how does it, how, how does the government then, a nation then that has uh, over a trillion pounds worth of debt and yeah. a growing deficit, how does it afford a ten percent return? So, so the, that is also a question that the that the investments that have to be done have to be done in a way that actually are holistic in their returns. And forgive me, I'll go back to, to King's Cross. King's Cross is a place where we developed 60 acres, not us, it's pensioners, 60 acres of, of inner city. But what we did was we are creating a holistic society. The returns are to ordinary working men and women, mm -hmm. affordable housing, 
right? Inventing that, free school. So there is a partnership to be done between the owners right. of capital, is, who yeah. are all well, we'll the women we'll see what, and uh, government. We'll see this what is only the just going to benefit the already, already, already wealthy, isn't it? You know, taxpayers are already paying too much for these infrastructure projects. The ones you can afford to invest in it are the ones that are, are going to be able to afford to invest in it. The rest of us struggle. OK, listen, we're nearly out of time, so I want to get all your views on uh, the Donald Trump <laughs> Farago uh, facing a backlash. You've, you've got this story. I mean, it's in so many papers. Suzanne, you've got it. Facing a backlash over these comments. Yeah, I mean, my, my number one question is, why is anyone surprised about this? <laughs> this man has demonstrated time and time again that he's sexist, uh, misogynist, all the rest of it. Why is anyone surprised? Uh, I, I have to I have to laugh, actually. His wife's statement, um, if, if a statement was never written by the person that's alleged to have said it, but by mm. a spin doctor, this is it. He has the heart... experiences now. Well, you no, know, but this is certainly it. He has the heart and mind of a leader, you know, yeah, but his brain's in his pants. Yeah, well, Nigel, um, well, Nigel Farage <laughs> is out there for the debate, and he seems to think, oh, it's just a bit of banter. I, there's no excuses for this, you know, but, but also are, are I have to say... Are you condemning what Nigel said? I'm, because, I'm saying because he, I don't Because think he said this is just alpha male boasting, yeah, all well, men I, do it. I don't think... All well, men I'm sure do all men do, and sorry, I, I'm all sure men that... Do not yeah, do and I'm it. sure all men in power might... Some men in power might... So Nigel's wrong. Nigel's wrong on this. I don't think there's any excuses for Trump. Do you think Nigel should not be turning up to support Trump at tonight's rally? I, I wouldn't be there supporting Trump personally, but can I so also say... So you're condemning Nigel for doing that. pushing me, isn't I it? I am. But can I say because, also... Because I think, I why, think not to, why not to condemn him as well I've as Trump? I've said I don't think there's any excuses for what Trump has said, but I also must highlight um, Hillary Clinton's hypocrisy here. You know, if, right. if Trump's had any fantasies about cigars in the Oval Office and young interns in a navy blue dress, whose fault is that? Hang on a she minute. Oh, that's been, she that's been, been, that's that's her, that's that's she absolutely her. outrageous. To blame she the is not woman responsible for, her for Bill Clinton's behaviour. Trump covered up for him. Trump. She covered Trump up for him. Just for in a sense, like his so wife is now covering You cannot equate these two things. You cannot equate. You cannot equate Trump's verbal attacks on women and his I'm actual sexual assault. I'm with I'm with I think, I think and you his can. that this it's is justified. It's a from with, with somebody, I think you can. I think you can. Sorry, and do you, and do you think this is the end of his candidacy? Do you so think he should stand down? I think, uh, I think any moral man Suzanne. should stand down. I'm completely with you. You, you cannot blame uh, a woman because her husband cheated on her. I'm not blaming him. But, 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 but here is what scares me. What I'm scared is actually it might not derail him. I mean, the United States is very different. And he has a lot of support in, in parts of the states which are very different in the way they you look at the world. You should see my timeline overnight, my Twitter timeline, when I started criticising Trump. The number of men who came back saying absolutely yeah. obscene things to me. Is that right? Oh, it's appalling. It's I mean, absolutely I mean, appalling. I mean, I mean defend, defending yes. him as um, this is what men do. No, they do not. It. Sorry, men do not do this. This I'm, is not a they don't. Thanks stop. for saying that, Saka. Listen, thank you all very much indeed <laughs> for taking us through uh, some very important stories in the papers today. Very good to see you all.